Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, a professional exploiter and breaker of your most beloved video games. Today's target for mischief is the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. But what is Oblivion? Is it a video game? Or is it the thing we crave in order to be free from this wretched mortal plane of existence? It's a video game! Woo! Oblivion is a handcrafted RPG adventure. The developers have perfectly balanced and engineered the most enjoyable fantasy experience ever released. That is, of course, before Todd Howard personally gave birth to Skyrim. So is Oblivion a perfectly balanced game with no exploits? Well, let's find out. But before we begin, like a distant father, Opera GX has returned after several months with my birthday money. One thing about Daddy Opera GX that is certain is that it can naturally beat up your dad or whatever browser you happen to be using. Now I know, like most gamers, you're a lazy bugger who struggles with change, but it literally takes five nanoseconds to just import all of your useless bookmarks and gubbins from your old browser, so there's literally no excuse for not changing. What are you waiting for, you fool? But best of all, it's highly customizable. For example, you can have this snazzy spiff background, because those lovely boffins at Opera GX have made their very own browser mod for me. Simply hop onto the GX store and search for me, and you will find my very own lovely mod that you can install, and you must install it so that way it is the greatest mod on the Opera GX store. Never before have you been able to browse the internet with typewriter noises as you search for your very own cute corgi pictures. Glorious. And then of course when you close down the browser, goodbye for now. Oh, it's perfect, it's got all of the noises. But best of all, by hovering over say YouTube, you are reminded to drink tea. Tea time. It's tea time. Truly groundbreaking technology from the Opera GX boffins, you will never now be able to escape the reminder to drink tea! DRINK TEA! But yes, it's very cool and thank you Opera GX for making it for me. So what are you waiting for? Use the link in the description and become one with the British hive mind. Thank you Opera GX for sponsoring, now onwards with the video! Ladies and gentlemen, our hero today is going to be none other than Big Susan, although um, Big Susan's gonna need some fixing because uh, she's a little bit scarred. Uh, uh, so yeah, let's just quickly fix up Big Susan's face. Make her look a little bit more like a human being. Oh, wow. Yep, we're just gonna have a big old, big old head on Susan. Yep, this is fine. This is anatomically correct. Humans can do this. Oh my gosh, I just love the way eyeballs naturally clip through your uh, forehead. That's just beautiful. Great design by Todd Howard to add that in. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our beauty has been created. Say hello to Big Susan. She is one heck of a specimen. My goodness. She's going to become the most overpowered character in existence in this universe. So effectively, you're looking at the face of God, ladies and gentlemen. You should be in awe. Right, so welcome to the wider world. We are playing as the legendary, lovely Big Susan. She is looking fantastic. Now, Big Susan is a very special individual. They are a Breton. Now, Bretons have a few unique advantages to them. Namely, if we look at our current active effects, you will see that we have the ability to resist 50% of all magic. This is just due to the the Breton's natural ability, which is pretty jazzy indeed. At the same time, I decided to put ourselves under the stone of the Atronach, meaning we also absorb 50% of spells that we take and convert it into mana. So already, if you happen to be a mage and you're shooting firebolts at our lovely big Susan here, you're just going to be absorbing all of that spicy electricity. But what makes Susan so special is what we're going to be doing to her. You see, we're going to be turning her into something absolutely horrifically overpowered. In order to do that, we actually need to do something that you should never normally do in this game. And that is, we're just going to be leveling up. I know you are never, ever, ever meant to level up in this game unless you have a good reason, but alas, Big Susan, she's got the greatest reason of all. In order to make one of the most overpowered builds in this game, you've got to be about level 20, and Susan here, well, she's level 1. How do you level up? Well, you've got to level up your primary skills. And I decided to sink all of those points into things like acrobatics and athletics. What does that mean? Well, it basically just means that in order for Big Susan to level up, I just need to jump up and down repeatedly. Welcome to mid 2000s RPGs, ladies and gentlemen. This is gameplay. Now we also have some uh, pesky hooligans up ahead. That's right. There's some evil bandits and oh my, look, they've got a bow and arrow and they are going to try and fight us, but it's okay. We don't need to fight them. All right, look at this. Yeah, you're going to shoot a bow at me. Oh, nice try. That's right. You can just dodge arrows if you want. And this individual here is going to charge at me with an axe, uh, but luckily I can just punch them. Now, the more they hit me, the more I'm going to be leveling up certain skills. Uh, and this individual here is pretty powerful. However, the perks of fighting with fists is that when I hit people, I actually absorb some of their stamina. And when you have no stamina, 
uh, well, you can't really do anything and you just end up falling on the ground. Now, what I'm going to do is also just level up one of my other skills, which is restoration. So we are just going to be uh, immediately cranking out some lovely heals and uh, time to get on with our fight. Hello there, bow person. Don't worry, it doesn't matter if they hit me. Just wibble around and then get in their face and, oh, just punch them a bunch. There we go. Now, you're going to level up my light armor skill for me, but you're also going to die. And well, bam, there goes the bandit bow woman. Splendid stuff. We've improved ourselves. Now, one ingenious thing that the Oblivion developers decided to do is that right at the start of the game, you can just immediately fast travel to basically anywhere on the map, which, as you can imagine, uh, kind of breaks the game a little bit as you just don't need to walk anywhere in this beautiful handmade world. But that's fine. Who cares? One thing we need to be doing, however, is improving Big Susan. And there are a few brilliant ways we can improve Big Susan. So, of course, Big Susan is not a perfect vessel right out of the bat. In fact, Big Susan needs to be improved a little bit. And one of the many ways in which we can improve Big Susan is by uh, lockpicking this chest here or either pickpocketing the key off of Branwyn here outside of the lovely Imperial City Arena. And the reasoning is very simple. Inside this chest is a very special item. So I'm going to lockpick the chest. It's going to probably take me a few attempts. But once we do, we get something very jazzy. Ah, fantastic. Here we have it. It is the Bands of Quang and Lo. It's just a set of braces, but it fortifies your hand-to-hand -hand combat by 20 points, which is, as you can imagine, pretty jazzy. Anyway, we'll just steal all of that. Anyway, now that we have these lovely stolen items, our hand-to-hand -hand combat is now very powerful. In fact, a lot more powerful than it realistically should be for our level. So what we now need to do is power level Big Susan as much as humanly possible. One of the ways we can do that is just to simply jump a lot, but what we're also going to do is go and punch a bunch of things. As I said, our goal is level 20, so leveling up as fast as possible is the best thing we can possibly do. Oh, I haven't seen your sons, have you? Oh, they went off into the forest. Where are your sons? Ah, oh, they're going to find some creatures at the farm. Lovely. Uh, yes, this is brilliant. Now, um, we can go and assist them. Uh, I mean, they'll probably die because we're not exactly going to be good at saving them at all. But that's okay. All right, so we got our first quest. Uh, it is to go to a farm and potentially save this man's sons. I mean, I'm going to be honest. Big Susan is not necessarily the heroic type. Big Susan is the big smashy type. But potentially fighting goblins is a brilliant way of gaining experience. So provided it's not completely impossible, we're going to do it. Right, are you two the sons? Oh, yep, he's the sons. All right, so it's over to the killing field we go. Right now, you two, I'm going to keep you alive, and it is going to be glorious, hopefully. All right, here they come, those pesky goblins. Uh, so, yes, it's best if we just immediately take the lead and start wailing on these goblins. And, oh my goodness, they do not like the hand-to-hand -hand combat buffs I just got. Uh, yep, it turns out these goblins, because I'm only level one, are also going to be very low level. And that means that uh, punching is highly effective. Maybe these brothers will live. Get away from the brother. Get away from the brother, you. Good, they can slightly defend themselves. Quickly, they're fighting the brothers. Don't you dare. Get away. Get away from that. No, they killed one of the boys. You killed one of the sons. Well, my hand-to-hand -hand has increased. All right, there we go. Rallis, uh, we must return to the town whilst we can. I'm sorry about your brother. That's a real shame. But most importantly, we finally unlocked our first level up, which is very, very good indeed. So we're going to get back to town, hopefully make a little bit of money, have a rest in a bed and level up. And then all I've got to do is just repeat that about another 20 times. Ah, oh, here we go. We found the dad. Hello. Uh, it's slightly awkward news. Saved your farm. Your son's dead. Oh, he has little to offer me. What little money he has must now be spent on the burial. What has he got for me? 150 gold? <sighs> Fine, that'll do. That'll do. 150 gold's enough. That can buy me a bed. All right, so I'll ask for a bed. There you go. It's only 10 gold. Lovely stuff. So fantastic. We've got ourselves a bed. Um, it's it's the floor. That's wonderful. Lovely. Right, well, we can have our first sleep, and in doing so, we will get to level up. Yay! We are going to level up our speed and our agility and our strength. Because that will increase how effective we are at fighting and also how fast we move. Well, that was very successful. Uh, Big Susan has completed her first quest and made her first bit of money. However, we're going to need a few additional things from here on out. We're going to need heavy armor in order to improve Susan's protection. And also we need to level up more so that I can start breaking the game in order to get some very special items. Bam! I'm jumping into the midpoint of the video when you least expected me. That's right. For the first 8,000 people who like this video, you're going to receive a glorious offer. You're going to be visited whilst you sleep in your dreams by Big Susan. That's right. The beautiful, the majestic, the un 
unstoppable. And if you don't manage to like the video, then guess what? You're going to be visited in your nightmares by Big Susan. Oh my god, I am so sorry. But there's nothing I can do for you. She's an immortal like me. So be sure to worship our new Susan E. Overlord in the comment section. So goodbye, onwards with the video. Right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've made our first little bit of money as the wonderful and illustrious Big Susan, but we have a decent way to go. Most importantly, we need to level up as fast as possible. Now, of course, there are a few ways to level up. We can fight and actually do quests and such. Uh, that's a complete waste of time. Alternatively, the greatest thing we can possibly do is make money. Now, there are three ways to make money in Oblivion. Way number one is to make it via legitimate means. Quest, sell, all of that wonderful stuff. Way number two is to find a dude, paralyze him, and steal him of all of his infinite money. And we normally do that in videos as it's the fastest, but today we're going to be doing something slightly different because it also gives us a bit of experience. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be scroll duping. Yes, it's perfectly balanced indeed, I know. Now, when it comes to printing infinite money via scrolls, you're going to want to go over here to the Imperial Market and find yourself Kalindal. Now, Kalindal is brilliant. He sells a whole bunch of spells and he has quite a few of them. Effectively, you're just going to want to find the scrolls which he has the largest quantity of, which in our case is the Absorb Minor Magicka scrolls. And we're going to buy as many of these as humanly possible. We can buy 10 of them for 250 gold. Wonderful. Then what we're going to do is quite simply exit this menu and start duplicating items. Now the way in which we do this is very simple. Go into your inventory and select the giant stack of scrolls you have. Then hover over the actual scroll you want to duplicate or the most valuable item in your inventory. In my case it is going to be this chameleon scroll. Then what you're going to want to do is simply shift click and drop it on the ground and you'll notice that very interestingly our one chameleon scroll has become a uh, 10 chameleon scrolls. Very jazzy indeed. In order to repeat this we're going to want to drop all bar one of our scrolls on the floor into one lovely big pile, select the Absorb Minor Magic of Spell again, and then drop the Chameleon Scrolls. And repeat over and over again, we now have 20 Scrolls of Chameleon. Ladies and gentlemen, in the wise words of Todd Howard, it just works. Right, and we're bam, we have printed far too many Chameleon Scrolls now. Lovely stuff indeed. Now, most importantly, we can take some of our giant stack of 64 Chameleon Scrolls, and we can try and make some money with them. We can go on over to Clandal here and sell him some of this gubbins. There we go, we're gonna get 660 gold from this, very nice. Now what we're going to do with all of this gold is we actually want to start leveling up. And one of the best ways to level up is to simply be taught. So I will simply repeat this process over and over again until I gain enough gold from these lovely two NPCs. I'll be back after I've been duplicating for around about a day or two, as then we'll have enough gold to effectively power level our way to the moon. One eternity later. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Can you tell which item I've been duplicating? I, I think this man can. He has bought millions and millions of gold worth of the hands of the Atronach from me, um, all because he sold me one copy and I then turned it into 570 of them right in front of his eyes. I've effectively had a macro going for quite a few hours and, well, uh, the money making has gone very, very well indeed. As you can probably tell by the fact that I have an astronomical 2.2 million gold in my inventory. Very nice. Now, with all of this gold, we actually need to go and do something, and that is to spend it on stuff. And we are going to be spending it on stuff in order to level me up. So first things first, I'm going to need some heavy armor. So I'm going to buy an upgraded iron helmet from him. There we go. That will improve my head armor. Now, Venado here is also very special because this man is a trainer. And what this means is effectively, we can just give him money. And in doing so, he is going to level up our heavy armor skill. Now, this is brilliant because in doing so, this also can level me up as a character. There we go, I should now rest and meditate on what I've learned. This is brilliant. Now what I will be buying from these lovely gentlemen is going to be a full set of armor. So I'm going to be wanting some lovely iron boots, and then I'm going to be wanting a lovely steel chest plate. And we're bam, I am looking fan- oh wait, I need some trousers, don't I? Uh, where are the trousers? Alright, there we go, I found some trousers to uh, balance out the look. There we go, much better. Right, into the inn we go. Alright, so Velis can I have a bed? There we go. 20 gold, fantastic. My goodness, that's a lot of money but to be fair this room is a fair bit nicer to sleep in so bam we've gone to sleep and we've leveled up at level two brilliant stuff time to increase our endurance our strength and our speed wonderful one power level session later welcome back ladies and gentlemen we're up to level 25 and we beelined our way here which means that our statistics are yes a little bit better but our straight attributes are pretty bad indeed oh my goodness sure our speed is maxed out so i can jump really high i mean this is just absurd levels of height. I can jump a good two meters in the air from the ground. But as I mentioned, I want to become a god. Now, in order to
to become a god, I believe the best way to do it is not to do an insane amount of damage. No, 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 no. But what we're about to do is very broken. We're going to turn the enemy's power against them. In order to do that, we need uh, this lovely man here to be nice to us. Now, after doing a few lines of quests for the Jermaine family over here in Coral, in which we basically retake their farm, very simple, you just kill a few trolls, this man is going to proposition us with a quest. A quest to go and steal an item. And this item is very spicy. Alright, so effectively, a lovely item was held by this family, and it was stole by a whole bunch of ogres who are hiding in a valley somewhere, so all I need to do is go to this cave, and then logically, I should find a very special item. Inside this cave should be the Honor Blade of Coral, a very, very special fancy sword. However, it's not exactly very useful. The item we actually seek is of greater value. So, we're bam, we're off to go punch some trolls. Alright, so we've made our way inside of the cave, where we just have to fight these ogres. Of course, we use the classic patent pended run in and punch strategy. They're also not very good with perception, so we can just kind of sneak our way around. Oh, hello there. Punch! Oh, that was good! That was a really good punch! And there we go, that's another dead troll. Lovely stuff indeed. Okay, here we go, lovely, just stealth our way along. Oh, here we go, I do believe this is one of the items we're looking for, and oh my, okay, right, we found um, the uh, chieftain of the ogres. He's gonna be quite a spicy boy indeed. Now, of course, we are just two big boys effectively punching each other with our fists, which is, as you can imagine, very effective. And he's dead, lovely stuff. And he drops the honor blade himself, lovely stuff. All right, fantastic, the item has been recovered, so it is time for me to escape from this lovely cave system. Now, instead of giving the item back to the quest giver, what you actually want to do is head on over to the castle, and one of the lovely gentlemen in here is going to be able to provide us with an item of far greater value than the honor blade itself. That's right, Leif here is going to give us something spicy. And I'm going to say, hey, here's the sword. Well, bam, he's going to be very, very happy. And in return, we are given a glorious gift. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. It is none other than the Escufion of Charl. So, well, bam, what do I get? I get a lovely, very special item. Say hello to the Escutcheon. Uh, it is a piece of heavy armor, it is a shield, and it will reflect 35% of damage on self. That's right, if you come up to me and you try and punch me, 35% of your own damage is going to get bounced straight back to you, which, as you can imagine, is pretty decent. However, it's not perfect, is it? So we need to make it better, ladies and gentlemen. We need 100% damage reflection. Now, of course, we're one third of the way there. However, we can do better. And for that, we're going to want to make our way over to Leowin, where we're going to be getting ourselves a secret villain lair. This lovely location, Deep Scorn Hollow, yes, it is just off the southern tip of Leowin, and it is ours. It is effectively this useless piece of land. But guess what? It's our base. And if you're to swim under here, we're bam, you can get inside of this secret location. Now, this location is pretty good, but it needs to be restored to its old former glory. And in order to do that, um, I'm going to need to basically spend a bunch of money to improve the place. And don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, money is something that I have quite a lot of. Luckily for me, I can just immediately fast travel over to the Wayward Inn, where we're going to locate our lovely friend. Ah, oh, and here we go, it's Roly. This man is what I need. Yes, here we go. He has some pretty spicy items that he can sell, but most importantly, he has the Icor of Siphis for 5,000 gold and all of the necessary upgrades to our lovely new abode. So we're just going to immediately buy all of them. Lovely stuff indeed. And with that, I've purchased everything, which is very, very important because now when we go back to our super secret base of Deep Scorn Hollow, there will be a special gift waiting for me. Ah, yes, not only is it a beautiful, lovely base with a whole bunch of ingredients, it is also a glorious area. Hello. Now up these swanky steps, I do believe. Oh my goodness, check out this. Yes, a new swanky area to relax in, my new pimping bed. And what we also get to find in this lovely room of ours is in this lovely cabinet, you get the raiment of the Crimson Scar. That's right, it's a piece of light armor. And very importantly, this special bit of light armor grants 35% of reflect damage. This is, as you can imagine, getting pretty spicy. If we take a look at our brand new active effects, you will notice that reflect damage is up to 70. Oh my, that's pretty good. So let's go and actually test this bad boy out in action. I need to find some kind of wildlife to punch, or rather find some kind of wildlife to punch me, and oh my, look at that horrible beastie creature. Yep, this should do nicely. So, effectively, not only are we going to be taking 70% less damage from this monstrosity, it's also going to be receiving 70% of its own damage. So yes, the Landru is going to be punching us, and you'll notice its health is going down, and mine isn't. Oh my, that is indeed a shame. Oh, and it appears to have punched me to death, and by punched me to death, I mean it's punched itself to death on me. So, well, bam, that is a very nice spicy
spicy creature that has just died. Yes, taking 70% less damage is good, but taking 70% less damage and dishing it straight back out to someone else, oh now that's just even better. Now of course this isn't the be all and end all. For example, if we were to now run into say a magic caster, if they were to cast spells at us, well, we can't reflect spell damage, but luckily what we can do, ladies and gentlemen, is just resist the hell out of it. That's right, we already resist 50% of magic and absorb 50% as well. All we need to do is get this up to 100% and we're immune to magic. Get this up to 100% as well and we're immune to physical damage. At that point, the only thing that can damage us are bows and, well, bows and oblivion kind of suck. This isn't Skyrim, okay, ladies and gents? They're just terrible. All right, let's see if I can find myself an additional reflect item. Right, I've made my way over to one very special location indeed. This is the Robber's Glen Cave, just north of Breville. Uh, this is the easiest location in the game to farm for enchanted items, and I am looking for one lovely either enchanted ring or necklace, which hopefully will spawn in here, and if it doesn't, it's fine. We can just immediately reload the game. So, yep, once again, we'll just come through here and uh, punch you up a bunch, you die. There we go, just punch these imps down, lovely stuff, and just like that, we've killed a bunch of them. But we must continue to go deeper. Luckily for us, we have endless healing spells at our disposal, and any imps we run into are easily defeated by the fact that I can just use the magic they sling at me to just out-heal them. Right, so we've made our way through here, and sure, there are a few enchanted items around, but unfortunately, there's no enchanted items that I actually want. Consequently, I am just going to uh, reload my save. Yes, that's right, I will just reload my way to the start of the dungeon and just run through. There is literally no point in fighting any of these creatures because they don't matter. Okay, what do we got? Weak sorcery potion, that's useless. Ring of willpower, useless. Bow of curses, once again useless. Oh, right, and fantastic, we actually found one of the items I was looking for. Uh, this is one of the two necessary items that can fill this task. It is the Ring of the Iron Fist, and of course this is the best cave system to find one. A Ring of the Iron Fist, pretty decent, fortify hand hand by 25 points on self, but most importantly reflect damage by 33% on self. Very nice indeed. So by now equipping this bad boy, we're going to have something very spicy. So not only is my hand to hand fighting skill better, but I now can reflect damage like nobody's business. How much damage can I reflect? Oh, I can reflect 103 damage. That's pretty spicy. So yep, I'm just going to punch my way out through all of these imps. Do I need to fight them? No, but it sends a message to them. Ah, fantastic. This is what progress feels like. We are more powerful than we have ever been. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the face of a god. A true god. A powerful deity being. One that cannot be defeated by mortal means. It's time for me to find myself a living creature to have a little fight with. I don't know, maybe a bear or something. There's a bunch of bears in this woods, I imagine. Just anything. Oh, look, here we go. Here's a dryad. That looks kind of like an evil being. Hello. Now, Mr. Spriggan, you're probably going to summon stuff. And yep, you've summoned some bears to fight me. Now, unfortunately for you, um, I'm not going to actually take any damage from this. And uh, your bear's actually about to die. There you go. It died punching me. And uh, you're also going to die punching me. Right, anyway, there we go. The Spriggan's dead and I took absolutely no damage. That is very jazzy. Oh my goodness, look at that. There's a Minotaur Lord down there. Now, that is a high level enemy. That is a very spicy high level enemy. So, naturally, uh, let me just hit him with uh, a flare. There you go. That'll do some damage. And punch me, Minotaur. Wow. Okay, that was a big hit. That was another big hit. In fact, these hits are so big, uh, technically, some of it counts as magical damage. And you'll notice that particular bit of magical damage does, in fact, go through our block. But when he does his melee punches, uh, nothing goes through. So, yes, this man is about to die. Rest in pieces. Oh, dear. Nice try, Mr. Minotaur. Nice try. Oh, and look, crabs. Hello there, mud crab. Punch me. Punch me again, mud crab. Do it. Oh, you died. What about you, Mr. Mud Crab? No, your friend. He's also dead. Oh, crabby. Why, Mr. Crabs? Why? Right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, we're in a pretty decent stead. We have the ability to reflect 100% of melee damage. However, we are missing something. The ability to negate magic entirely. You see, currently, the two ways we can take damage are archery and magic, and of course, archery is meaningless. So, what we need to do is find a way to resist magic. Now, there's one item we are looking for, the mundane ring. The mundane ring allows you to resist 50% of magic, which, when combined with our natural Breton abilities, means we will resist 100% of magic. There's just one minor issue. That item appears on a character that would require us to do the main quest, and whilst I might be level 25 and the Oblivion Crisis is ongoing, I am definitely not going to save the Emperor. Instead, I'm going to find this weird door. That's right, we found the strange door, and with this strange door, we're just going to go through it. Oh my goodness, yes. Another mad one. Yes, lovely. Uh, so effectively, 
effectively anyone who goes into this door goes crazy. Uh, unfortunately for them, I'm going into this door. Anyway, hey, Haskell. So effectively, we've been let into uh, the Shivering Isles of Madness, which is very good indeed. And as you can see, uh, it's a little bit of a funky place, a little bit strange. And we're here for one very specific reason, and that is to find ourselves a shop. Now, effectively, in order to find these lovely items, the best way in which to do it is to head on over to the very large settlement on the other side of this island, because in that settlement, we will find ourselves a very, very special shop, which sells very, very special items. Right, so I have finally arrived in uh, New Shagora, which is the lovely capital city of the Shivering Isles. It is a wonderful place full of madness and lunatics and general just good vibes. So when you arrive at EOL's Mysteries here, we are going to be able to successfully barter with EOL here to um, hopefully get something very jazzy. Now this man sells all kinds of special gubbins and what has he got here? Base Ring of Alchemy, Base Ring of Frost Shield, and Grand Ring of Shadows. Okay, now this Grand Ring of Shadows absurdly overpowered if you're doing a chameleon build, but we are not. So consequently, we are going to have to wait as time passes, which is completely fine. All we have to do is stand outside and wait for three days. So I'll see you in three days' time. Right, it finally happened, ladies and gentlemen. The mundane ring, we found it. It only took about, like, four reloads of the shop, uh, but here we are. The mundane ring. This is a very, very special item. It will reflect 35% of spells, but also resist 50% of magic, which is brilliant, because we can now take that and equip it. Of course, it does cost 33 grand, but hey, I mean, I'm literally made of money. So now when we take a look at our magical effects, we will see that we resist 100% of magic and we reflect 100% of damage and 35% of spells. Basically, we are now immune to all normal means of combat. All right, so I've just fast traveled my way back and well, I've basically become a god now. In fact, I don't think I can die. So what's the best way to test this? Well, it's to go to Kavach, baby. Let's go save this city. Now, of course, I am level 25, which means that the Kavach attack is actually going to be very different to the normal one that you might have actually played, uh, because basically the way Oblivion works is it scales the enemies based off of your level, which is pretty normal for games. The only issue is it doesn't scale it based off of your stats, which means if you level up in the fashion I did by just beelining levels as fast as possible, uh, you're actually incredibly understated for the actual event. Luckily, it doesn't matter, but hey, look, there's actually a pretty meaty dude here. Uh, this man, he looks pretty spicy, but uh, luckily for me, uh, he can't do anything to me. I can just punch him over and over again and he is going to die. Right, I've got these uh, these really big storm Atronax to deal with. Uh, but yeah, turns out quite easy. Quite easy to actually fight them. I'm just gonna pop some heals. There we go. I am completely resistant to all of your gubbins. There we go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, ladies and gentlemen. We are immortal. Anyway, apparently they want me to go in and close the uh, the gate. Uh, I mean, you don't need to. We can just walk around it and go straight into Kvatch. There we go. Let's save everyone. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Look at how high level this area is. They're summoning spiderlings. Spiderlings, for goodness sake. And they're trying to paralyze me. Little do they know paralyzing has no effect on me. Um, and I can just maintain a block. And that is going to do enough to um, kill everyone. There we go. Just let me stay here. Oh, you foolish being. You think you can hit me with your sword and everything will go fine. You are dead. Oh, dear. The Storm Atronax just blew themselves up on me. Alright, well, there is one Spider Daedra left. So I can just simply uh, defeat them. Job done. And there we go. Bomb they're dead. Fantastic stuff. We pretty much save the day there. Right, into this chapel we go. Now, of course, hiding inside this chapel, we have the greatest hero of our time. It is, of course, none other than the wonderful Brother Martin. Hi, Sean Bean. Big fan. Oh, you lovely Yorkshire tea glorious bastard. So, yes, of course, even though we're very high level and we're now facing very dangerous enemies, it matters little, for I am a god, and how can you kill a god? Right, now, in order to basically uh, truly see how powerful Big Susan has become, I've decided to spawn in three copies of Umaril here. Umaril being an incredibly high level nightmare being um, that effectively uh, just can destroy worlds. Now, interestingly here, Umaril is going to try and fight Big Susan and in doing so, Umaril is going to kill themselves. Um... <laughs> That was an absolute walk in the park. I thought that would take like longer than five seconds. Big Susan is not a woman who is easily satisfied. And unfortunately for Big Susan, most men can't last more than 10 seconds around her. But that's that's fine. Even these weird nightmarish Daedric gods can't. Oh my goodness. Right, Big Susan, what if we spawned in like 20 of them? Would that help? Would 20 Umarils fix it? Right, here we go. 10 Umarils, all fighting Big Susan one-on-one. -on -one. Come on, Big Susan. You've got it. Keep it up, Big Susan. You're doing great. 
great. Just stand around right in the middle of them. You're doing amazing, Big Susan. <laughs> this is gameplay. Oh my goodness. Oh my. This is just an absolute shambolic mess. Oh, all of the Umarils are dead. What a shame. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to actually face a uh, slightly superior challenge today. I've decided to spawn in none other than the final boss for the game. Say hello to Mayron's Dagon. Now, fortunately, I do feel a little bit small in comparison to Mayron's Dagon. I mean, Big Susan, uh, you know, I've decided to make her bigger by increasing her size by two. So um, she's taller than the average human now, which is great. It means she runs faster. Now, Mayron's Dagon has 1,000 health, 1,000 magicka, and uh, does 100 points of melee damage every time they hit, which means he has to hit me a whole bunch of times in order to kill himself because he has a huge amount of resistances. He is level 100 as well. So yes, he is uh, quite the meaty potato indeed. Now, he can't defeat me because I'm an immortal and eventually he will just simply punch himself to death. So until that happens, I'm going to have to sit here and wait a whole bunch of time. Oh, there we go. It's happened. It's happened. The Dagon has died. He is, um, he's doing great, guys. He's just having a grand old sink into the floor like a giant weird Play-Doh creature. Yes, exactly as Todd intended. Perfectly balanced and beautiful. I mean, this dude doesn't even drop any loot. He's useless. Absolutely useless. But hey, we defeated the boss of Oblivion. That's the game over, folks. We managed it. Big Susan has done it. What a hero. What a glorious hero. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Big Susan has conquered Oblivion by standing still and doing absolutely nothing and just watching as enemies beat themselves off. Okay, no, we can't say beat themselves off. Uh, the enemies just trip over themselves. Woo. Anyway, that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then make sure to give it a like and hop on down to the comment section and tell me what your most overpowered Oblivion build was. And if you want to see the adventures of Big Susan continue, then why not? Let's make it so! Because there is even more we can do to make her overpowered. Anyway, as always, a massive thank you to each and every one of the amazing Majestic Sausages who fund these videos. I'm, of course, talking about our YouTube channel members and patrons, which you can be for just one dollar slash pound a month. You get a whole bunch of emotes. It's glorious. You can flex on plebs in comment section. You even get members only videos, I know. Very spicy. And hey, if you're sat there wondering what video to watch next, look no further than this lovely video on screen now, chosen by myself to be majestic for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have a lovely day and goodbye for now.